Welcome back to Gothic Homemaking as we continue our Halloween home decor hunting of the season. <laughs> Recently, a viewer just like you wrote in and suggested that I check out the Big Lots store. I've never heard of a Big Lots store, but they told me that this year they have a Halloween line called Gothic Glamour. <laughs> well, let me tell you that anytime some big mainstream company puts out anything called Gothic, I have three thoughts that run through my mind. Uh, only one of us has a brain, and it's not you, dummy. Exactly. So pipe down. In any case, my three thoughts are thus. Firstly, wow, some mainstream company recognizes, acknowledges, and sees the value of goth. And they want to invest a ton of money to create a bunch of gothic stuff, which I'll probably want to buy. But moreover, when normal people are exposed to our culture, they'll realize how wonderful and how amazing it is, and will stop thinking that we're just a bunch of creepy devil worshippers. Go, I don't worship the devil. I don't know what's going on with you. In any case, my second thought is usually, ooh, I hope this isn't some cheesy cash grab where some giant corporation appropriates our culture just to make a quick buck, and then they do it terribly on top of everything. And my third thought is usually, why didn't they ask me to design their line? <laughs> I am a poser. I have to pose your lazy sack of bones every time we shoot an episode. You're not posing yourself, are you? In any case, in situations like this, I am always hopeful, but apprehensive. Hopeful, but apprehensive. And there was only one way to know how Big Lots Gothic Glamour line was gonna go, and that was to visit a Big Lots store. And I did exactly that. Take a look. I arrived in New Jersey where the sun shone brightly on the very first Big Lots store I've ever visited. I adjusted my mask and ventured forth. Seeing this creepy scarecrow was reassuring as I then knew that I'd truly found my witchy way to Old Cemetery Road. Big Lots has a lot of creepy animated dolls and many animated items. And while I don't go for that kind of thing, I gave them a whirl anyway. Welcome. This house is haunted. And while I'd never decorate the lair with an animated violin, I do very much appreciate the use of Dance Macabre by Sanson. It brings all the creeps to the yard. And that includes unicorns. And then suddenly, toilet humor. There's something really spooky in here. <laughs> what did I tell you? <laughs> oh, brother. Well, here we are, dear. Time to bone up. Why do you always have a bone to pick me? I never want to have fun anymore. Why don't we go out and grab a bite? All right. We could get some ribs. I know a great little joint. Dark gods, an old couple that has pun-filled arguments? <laughs> That's me and Orville. <laughs> I finished my tour of the animated figures with these ghouls. <laughs> okay, yeah, I legitimately jumped. <laughs> I was not expecting that creepy girl to pop up, and it really threw me for a whirl. I wasn't scared, I was startled. It was a jump scare. Come on, everybody gets startled at a jump scare. <laughs> Just watch the episode. We're getting to the good part. Besides all of the animated figures, they also had a generic Halloween section of tasteful items in traditional Halloween colors, like light-up jack-o'-lanterns and spiderweb placemats, spooky tchotchkes, and a light-up haunted house. And directly next door was the gothic glamour section. The first items I noticed were these towels, and my first thought was, why are they so colorful? And the more I examined the section, the more I realized that the gothic glamour color scheme is really broad. It contains white, black, red, purple, and gold, as you can see on these candles. It sometimes comes off as a bit much, and I feel like it was more successful when they kept it down to three colors or less. 
For instance, my favorite candles were the ones that were either black or purple with a gold key. And they smelled amazing, so I bought them all. I literally cleaned them out. As for the sculptural items, they seem to revolve around an undead royalty theme with classic gothic elements like death and romanticism. It's a little hit or miss like with any line. For instance, this candelabra was a bit cheesy for me, but this mirror is wonderfully elegant. And this guy was my favorite. What's not to love? We share the same taste in both furniture and hats. I'm pretty much game anytime you combine a well-rendered skeleton with shimmering black. I liked this sculpture as well, and I hope I'm not being too nitpicky, but I didn't love the white highlights on the crow. I think I would take it outside and paint the bird a solid black if I bought this. Now, we've seen many variations on the decorative pumpkin over the years, but I have to say I really liked this one. I think it's the base and the lace that sold me. Well, you know I love skulls, and I have that same darn throne in the lair, so we were off to a good start. But I was kind of bothered by the scale. Like, is that like a giant's skull on there? Nonetheless, it's still a really original and excellent design. And it lights up. And then I saw this, and I fell in love with it. It has elements of Frankenstein and steampunk and the Adams Family, and it lights up purple. As for their cushions, I liked this one though, it was a bit colorful for me. And this one is absolutely amazing. It actually looks like something I've designed, but because I have so many of my own cushions at this point, I had to leave it behind. Which brings me to my must-haves. I bought this thundering strobe light because I've always wanted one, as well as these orange and purple rope lights which always come in handy. As for decorative items, of course I grabbed this fellow and the Frankenstein light, and of course, there were all of those candles that I bought. As I stood at the checkout counter looking at my items, I would have sworn that instead of shopping at a Big Lots, that I was shopping at an actual goth store. Well, color me impressed. I was not expecting to love the gothic glamour line, but there were in fact items that I absolutely fell in love with. Regarding the color scheme, as I mentioned, I think it's got maybe one color too many. It renders some of the items so colorful that it's a little hard to recognize them as gothic, per se. But overall, I was extremely impressed. And this is just their first year, so I'm extremely interested to see what next year is going to bring for the Gothic Glamour line. Speaking of which, I should probably check in on Spirit Halloween's Gothic Noir line. I was doubtful of them last year as well. I was hopeful, yet apprehensive. Hopeful, yet apprehensive. And yet, I did find that they had some extremely interesting items as well. I wonder what they're doing this year. Orville, we should check out Spirit Halloween next. What do you think? I'm already there, babe. I'm already there. Every morning when I wake up and I see your crotchety face. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time as we continue our hunt for Halloween home decor right here on Gothic Homemaking.